Right, so in this um, case here, we've got some lorikeet catfish, which are sucker mouth catfish. Um, they're looking emaciated despite healthy appetite. So these are, when they're about four to five centimeters in length. So investigating the reason for this. So you can tell they're sucker mouth. So if you have a look at the mouth here, it's a very cool, rasping, disc like mouth. This is what it looks like on transverse section. Right, so what we're seeing grossly was that the eyes uh, were sunken in, and the reason for that, um, I guess in this case, it, it, under a microscope, it doesn't look like the eyes are sunken in, it's actually quite flush with the um, side. Uh, but what's, what normally happens is behind the eyes are actually fat cells, but in this case, you can see that there are no fat and this might be causing uh, the eyes to look sunken in, in the live fish. Uh, so we'll scan around a little bit more and we're looking at the brain now. So here the brain looks normal, there's no signs of inflammation um, and all the structures look like they're there. This is the skeletal muscle and some cartilage developing bone around it and that all looks fairly normal as well. And here we can see a little pocket of gills, and here we've got some lymphoid tissue. So the gills look pretty normal. Um, there's no thickening, no evidence of parasites or anything like that. And the secondary gill lamellae, they're all um, healthy and extending out into the open, so that's all right. And if we keep scanning around, looking at the rest of the fish, we can see we've come across some kidney tubules. And the kidney tubules here, to me, they look pretty normal. So what's causing the fish to be ill? So let's have a look at the, another section of the same fish. Let's have a look here. So if we scan around here, we can see that the gut is actually full of food, and that's what it should be. Um, this fish was euthanized, um, so there should still be gut full of food, and it's suggesting that they are eating. But if they're eating, why is it that the fish are dying in numbers? Have a look at the liver here. We've got what looks to be fairly normal glycogen type evacuation of the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes. So we just put that into focus. And that's what a normal healthy fish should look like, especially if there are um, cultured or ornamental fish in an aquarium that are fed well. This is what healthy liver should look like. And the intestine um, enterocytes, they look quite normal. That's a sort of the covering on the luminal surface. And have a look here. This is what I believe is the pathology. These here, let me say, let me put it into focus or put an arrow here. So these guys here, these are the pancreatic cells. And normally pancreatic cells should contain zymogen granules which should look pink and round in the cytoplasm. But in this case, we notice no such thing. And if we scan around a little bit more, I might be able to find a spot where there's sort of a hint or a suggestion of some granules. Um, so let's move around a little bit. So you can really tell that they are uh, pancreatic cells because I guess if you compare it to the liver cells here, they are quite a lot different. You can see that the liver cells here are paler and eosinophilic, as in meaning pink. The pancreatic cells are these guys here that are a little foamy and more basophilic or bluer in color. So we'll scan around a little bit more. Hopefully you won't get too sick, um, motion sickness, so warning. So just to demonstrate to you what a normal pancreas should look like. Here is a pancreas from a koi, and you can see these cells are the pancreatic cells, and within the cytoplasm are these little red granular globules. These are called zymogen granules, and these were actually absent from our lorikeet catfish. Okay, so here I have actually found one that may have a hint of zymogen granules, just to prove the point. So this cell here looks like it may have a few. 
but everything else are lacking. So I suspect that the lack of zymogen granules is what's causing the fish to not be able to digest food properly and properly assimilate it into the body, leading to emaciation. Well, there, there's no signs of inflammation, necrosis, or fibrosis. So for me, it doesn't look like it might be an infectious disease, like a infectious pancreatic necrosis virus. Um, but there are also talks about something in salmon where you might get a vitamin E deficiency, where you might get heart pathology as well. But if we have a look at the heart, and we've seen the skeletal muscles, they all look within normal range. So I suspect that might not be the cause of it. And so the only other thing that's out there in the literature that suggests what could be causing this is um, vitamin C deficiency. So that's what I'm suspecting and what I'll advise a client to do is to supplement uh, either in the water um, or in the feed additional vitamin C and see whether we can bring this back, uh, bring the fish back. Uh, well, these guys, I guess they're sucker mouth fish, so it makes it difficult to add vitamin C into the food um, because they're grazers and by the time they get to the food, uh, the vitamin C might have uh, dissipated from the food into the water. So normally in food you would have about, I think about 750 milligrams per kilogram of diet um, to supplement it. Um, otherwise you can add the vitamin C into the water at a rate of 1 to 10 milligrams per liter. That's really good um, in terms of immunity and disease resistance, wound healing. Uh, but in this case, I guess if they are deficient, we might even have to double it. Uh, vitamin C, you can get that from your local pharmacy, either in granule form. If you can get the uh, sugarless variety, the better. But it's also available through the website, thefishvet.com.au, uh, and the shopping cart at $15 per 100 grams. So there you have it.